People do strange things with dead bodies. I study beliefs about the afterlife, such as the possibility that saints can intercede on our behalf, and how these beliefs affect behaviour. For example, they have led to practices of pilgrimage and requests for burial at Sanctos, literally burial next to the saint, as well as the creation of a range of texts, such as hagiography, the lives of saints, and exemplar collections, short stories used for sermons and teaching. An image of a Cistercian from one of these saints their text is shown on the slide. In the Middle Ages, most Christians in Europe were Catholic, and monks were Benedictine, i.e. their lives are regulated by the rule of St. Benedict. Throughout the Middle Ages, there are waves of reform, usually calling for stricter standards. One of the groups founded in the 11th century were the Cistercians, who began life in Burgundy, modern-day France. My PhD has focused on three main research questions. How distinctive were Cistercian ideas about the cult of saints? How did these monks use their relics? And who did they allow to visit their shrines? To answer these questions, I have considered a range of texts from the first 150 years of the Order's history. I've read across regions, genres, and generations of monks, including Cistercian lives and exemplar collections from England, France, Germany, and the Low Countries, as well as archeological evidence and built remains, such as those of Revo Abbey shown on the slide. Here you can see the tomb shrine of Abbot William and the graves of other abbots in the chapter house. This is the room where the community would meet daily for meetings to hear from the abbot and other senior monks. I have discovered that contact relics, such as the water and cloth that might have touched the saint's bones, rarely received circulation outside of the monastery. And Cistercian texts also emphasize the power of their saints for their members. In the life of Bernard of Clairvaux, for example, we are told of the attempted exorcism of a laywoman using relics from his beard and this failed. The order advertised that Bernard was not an effective miracle worker for this person outside of the order. Ad Sanctus burial was similarly restricted to the most important and wealthy patrons of each abbey. My findings are significant because they demonstrate just how distinctive Cistercian practices with regards to the cult of relics were. I've also been able to demonstrate how rhetoric was shared across different genres of the order's documents. And this vocabulary related to withdrawal and isolation was important to their group identity, founded in opposition to those existing monastic institutions. So pilgrims were seen as a disruptive, distracting influence in the Cistercian monastery. While you might enjoy visiting the ruins managed by English heritage today, in the 12th century, you would not have received such a warm welcome. <laughs>